Lately, several people have asked me for my opinion on canning milk. Now, I'm not a canning expert. I'm not a food scientist. I don't even have a college degree. But I do have an opinion, and I'm willing to share it. And I don't expect everybody to agree with my opinion or even like it. And I want to apologize beforehand for the airplane noise. I have a very hard time around here limiting the background noise. If it's not the airplanes, it's the rooster, or it's locusts chirping in the background, or my husband with his TV going. It is extremely difficult to uh, put out a good quality video of uh, you know, what people have come to expect from television. Uh, it's also very difficult to do informative videos when there's really nothing to look at being that I don't have the budget of National Geographic and I have to work within copyright restrictions. So don't expect a dog and pony show here because it's not going to happen. But if you want to learn something, then hang in there and I'll tell you what I know about this. Now, when it comes to canning milk, it is not recommended to can milk. So in my opinion, I should not can milk. Uh, sometimes those recommendations are based on safety issues, sometimes they are based on quality issues, but whatever the case may be, it's not going to turn out all that well, so I don't want to waste my time on it. I easily accept the fact that everything doesn't freeze well, so I can just as well accept the fact that everything doesn't can well. I did try to find out exactly why it is not recommended to can milk though, and it turns out that in order to process the milk long enough to make it safe to drink, the milk ends up tasting burned. It's a, it's a quality issue, somewhat of a safety issue as well. Now I have done a lot of reading on the subject, trying to find out exactly what all the complexities were and everything. And it turns out that milk has several problems associated with it. One is coagulation, another is separation. Uh, it's very rich in nutrients, which gives bacteria a great place to grow and thrive. And there's also some natural sugars in milk that when, you're, when it's heated, it will caramelize. And if it's heated long enough to make it safe, it tastes burned. I wanted to do a very detailed uh, video about all of the different complexities of milk and everything that I found. However, it would be like a two hour long video that is that complex. I wanted, also wanted to provide links to all of the information. However, a lot of the information that I read up about this on are on uh, like books on Google where they provide some pages from books so that you can preview them before you buy them. And uh, they have time limits on those types of things. And I have exhausted my time limit on a lot of those books. And I know that if I provided a link, then a couple of you might be able to view the information and then the time limit would quickly be exhausted from that link. So what I suggest doing if you're more interested in finding information about this yourself is to search on the terms botulinum in milk and in container sterilization of milk. You will find uh, more scientific information by using those terms than if you use the word botulism and they will also be for, from more reliable sources. The information out there are from microbiologists and uh, you know agency type of things. Uh, just use the term botulinum instead of botulism. And for simplicity of this video, I know that the proper term is clostridium, botulinum, bacterium. However, to keep it simple, I'm just going to refer to it as botulism because that's what everybody is used to hearing. Now, my problem with canning things that are not recommended to can is that I don't have a process or a processing time to use which has been scientifically proven to be safe. All I could do would be, you know, pick a number, take a guess, try to compare it to something that I think is comparable and I could be totally wrong on or, you know, just go by somebody saying they've been doing it for, you know, 40 years and they're not good yet. And I need something uh, better than that. That's not a good standard to use because uh, canning have, can have peculiarities about it. Uh, for example, in the case of milk, um, botulism is a risk for milk. Some people think that it can't possibly be a risk because botulism is in the soil and milk isn't grown in the soil. Well, a cow's udders are very close to the soil. 
and when they lay down they don't lay on their backs I mean dirt can get on their udders and when people wash the udders you know you're cleaning things sometimes you miss a spot it is very possible for botulism to end up in milk now microbiology is rel a relatively new thing in the whole scheme of things we still don't know how everything works they're still testing things trying to figure it all out uh, they have a theory that the organisms that are in milk have the ability to inactivate botulism however I saw a study out there that said that they found that the organisms do have that ability to inactivate type A botulism but it doesn't work on type B now when you hear somebody say that they've been canning things for 40 years and they're not dead yet they that can very well be true however the presence of botulism the type A and type B varies geographically type B is more prevalent in the west where type A is more prevalent in the east it could very well be that they don't have a problem but you could depending on where you live there are other factors that come into play such as temperature and humidity and altitude you know where they live all the stars could be in the perfect alignment for them and it could be working for them but it might not work for you going by someone saying that they've been doing it for 40 years and they aren't dead yet is not a good standard to use when it comes to safe canning now there's also people out there that think that they're using pasteurized milk so what it's safe well, past, when they pasteurize milk, they bring it to 161 degrees for about 15 to 20 seconds, depending on the, the type of uh, equipment they have, the processes they use, and so forth. Basically, it's 161 degrees for 15 seconds. In order to kill botulism spores, you have to reach a temperature of 240 degrees, and you have to hold it there for at least 15 minutes. Um, our canners reach the temperature of 240 degrees however some people think that while they're venting they're at 240 degrees it's not until there is pressure on that canner that it reaches 240 degrees now the majority of my life the only canned milk I ever saw sold was evaporated milk and it tastes awful and I wondered why they did it this way well when it comes to uh, botulism there are several factors that have to be present in order for the toxin to be produced. One is the absence of oxygen, another is the, the pH level, another is the water activity level. There's a redox potential and it can be controlled by temperature or by preservatives and there's another thing that I can't think of right now. But uh, when it comes to this evaporated milk, there um, in order for a food to be safe it has to have a water activity level below 0.85 milk has a water activity level of 0.9 I believe or 9.5 by evaporating the milk they have reduced the water activity level to 0 0.80 thereby making it uh, safe from botulism and in addition to that they process this at 240 degrees for 15 minutes so if you were to can your own milk that would tell you that at, at a minimum that would be what you would have to do and this is evaporated milk you're talking about you know milk at the, the dangerous at water activity level sweet and condensed milk is basically evaporated milk with sugar added to it and the sugar inhibits bacterial growth so they don't process this as long and there's information out there that says that this is not a sterile product then we have UHT milk and UHT stands for ultra heat treated if you can your own milk this is not the same product as what you would end up with this has been ultra heated it has been heated at 280 degrees for two or three seconds and then it's rapidly cooled they're able to do that they, they have an enclosure where they have all the packaging in there and the milk is going through tubes and all and it's heated and cooled and then put into the packaging in a totally sterile environment we are not capable of achieving these results with our pressure canners our pressure canners do not reach the temperatures that will achieve this and we also don't have the ability for the rapid cooling now keep in mind if you go through that information that there are differences between the, uh, all the processes that you'll read about 
There's a process called thermization. That's basically a mild form of pasteurization. Uh, the reason they do that is to make raw milk safe enough to make it through the entire process. There is pasteurization. That's what most of the milk that we drink is. It is brought to 161 degrees in an attempt to destroy the bacteria that causes tuberculosis. Any bacteria that can survive 161 degrees is still in that milk, including Clostridium botulinum. There's also a process called ultra-pasteurization where it's uh, pasteurized at higher temperatures for a lower amount of time. Then there's the UHT process where they go as high as 280 degrees for two or three seconds. We're not capable of those things. All we are capable of is 240 degrees in our pressure canner. Several of the books out there give a processing time for doing it at 240 degrees and it varies from book to book. One book says anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Another book says anywhere from 20 to 35 minutes. Another one says anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes. So it's safe to assume that in order to can your own milk, you would have to can it under pressure at 240 degrees for a minimum of 20 minutes. I might be wrong about this, but I think that the variation in the times given and the temperatures given in those books is based on the fact that milk is often processed by, on a by-batch basis. They will bring the milk in, they will test the, bac the bacterial load in that milk, and then they will process it uh, based on that bacterial load. They want to be able to use the best time and temperature to kill that milk without ending up with a very cooked taste. If we canned milk, we would have to use a processing time which will ensure that all bacteria that might be in that can would be inactivated. There is a blog out there where a woman shows how she cans milk. Now, I applaud her for her efforts because she is trying to do it in a safe manner and a well-researched manner. She is processing hers for 25 minutes and she has pictures there step by step how she cans the milk and a picture of it in the end. It is. Uh, very brown, very caramelized looking. Uh, personally, I wouldn't be happy with that milk. I would prefer to just buy powdered milk. It's the smarter thing to do, in my opinion, from a food storage standpoint, because I have enough milk here to make six gallons of milk, and I would need 24 quart jars to achieve the same thing. It, it's just a big space saver. It's not much more expensive. In some cases, it can even be cheaper than buying fresh milk. As far as the taste goes, uh, it's not exactly like fresh milk, but neither is that burned milk. I guarantee you that this tastes better than milk that has been processed for 25 minutes. This is drinkable. So that's some of the things that I've learned about milk. I don't can milk. I'll never can milk, and I don't recommend that other people can milk, but I can't tell people what to do. To be clear about botulism, botulism spores are harmless in the presence of air. It's not until they are put in an oxygen-reduced environment that they can produce a deadly toxin. And of course, some other conditions need to be met as well. Uh, the pH has to be in a certain range, the temperature in a certain range, and the, the water activity level and so forth. So if there is botulism in the fresh milk in the refrigerator, it's no problem unless you go against the recommendations and try to can it yourself. Then it can be a problem. So in my opinion, uh, testing for botulism in milk probably isn't something that the dairy industry even concerns itself with because it's not a problem as long as it's exposed to air. I do my best to provide good information in these videos, but I'm like everybody else. I could misinterpret information. I could say the wrong things w without realizing it, whatever. But if I said anything wrong in this video, if it's not factually correct, please point it out in the comment section. You will not hurt my feelings. I would rather have good information out there. I know I have at least one biology teacher watching my videos. And if there's anything wrong with the information, please let me know. And if it's too much to fit into a comment box, 
<laughs> Lord help me, but send a uh, personal message and I'll do my best to correct the information. And if you just simply don't like the video, then please make a better one yourself and send it as a video response. So that's the things that I know about milk. Once again, I do not recommend canning it and I hope it helps.